Lakers in the house. We can start now. So <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, hey, if this if you missed last week, there is a recording available, right, Travis? That that they can get. Uh, if if you're a warrior, obviously you get access to all of these recordings, plus our Tuesday accelerator call where we answer your questions to help you uh, take progress, take take ground, and make progress in our success path. Last week was fire, guys. If you missed it last week, go back and watch the replay. I, I think it was definitely foundational to what you're going to hear today and what we're going to build on today. But today's going to be amazing. But definitely go back and watch the replay from last Thursday uh, and it let it set the groundwork for and build on uh, what you're going to hear today. A couple things we like to do before we get started. Make sure you have a Bible nearby and something to write with because you're going to want to take notes to help internalize what you're hearing. First thing we do is we internalize it. Second thing we do is we implement it. It doesn't do any good for us to gain new knowledge unless we apply it. Application is where we see the breakthrough. So we take notes so it can help us to, uh, to it can help get in us. And then from those notes, we can then begin to apply for the breakthrough, for the growth, right? And so the last thing we say is make sure you have your expectation meter set high. I believe that God meets us at the level of our expectation. If you come on this call believing that you're going to hear something today that's going to change the trajectory of your life, that is what you will get. If you come on the call and you're like, uh, let's see what this is about. I don't know this, that, and the other. Then that might be what you get too. And so three things again, have something, have a Bible so you can you follow along with the scripture that will be given. There will be a lot of scripture. Also have something to write with to help solidify what you're learning and make sure you set your expectation meter high because it's, it's about to happen, baby. We're getting ready to go in. Yeah, come on. Uh, if you got – check out in the chat. There's people from all over. I mean, literally all over the world. You guys got – connect with people. If you see over here, connect with them if they live near you. We have several people in, in Canada, several people from Texas. I see a couple people from South Carolina. Uh, like I said, yeah, like we're, 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 we're building family. This is the increased army right here. This is community. If you guys don't have, you know, a place to go where you can talk faith and you can talk going to new levels and fulfilling the call that's on your life. Like we, we invite you to keep hanging out with us. Like this is, this is what we do. Um, and I'll put a link at the end. Uh, we've got coaching programs and we have all kinds of stuff to help you go further faster and, uh, really dial this, this life in God's made so much available to us that we just leave on the table and what, what I'm kind of calling this like what we're, we're teaching in Romans today is it's, it's your new covenant benefits like did you guys know that like there's uh Rob it's too late I just transitioned I started preaching I can't help it uh we'll just get into it let's go uh, let's go yeah it's the, the the new covenant benefits I mean it's like you actually do get benefits when you live for God uh, it's a uh, was it Psalms 103 that says forget not all of my benefits right I'm gonna turn there real quick hopefully that's the right reference um, yeah forget not all of his benefits man he talks about he forgives your sins and heals your diseases and all kinds of stuff it keeps going there's a lot of great things that come with this life and what we talked about last week again I'll make sure you guys get the replay but we had uh, and this is awesome like this is this is not any shame or anything but we had people crying we had breakthroughs we had testimonies coming in over here on email on chat on message um of just made christians being set free people being set free this life that we get to live if you live it in faith and full of god you literally have no limits there's literally nothing stopping you you can accomplish whatever he's put on your heart and what i fully believe is that most of us are living below our benefits we've got them and either we don't know that we have them or we don't believe that we deserve them have you ever felt like i know god could heal me i know he can do it i know god can bless and prosper me but i just don't know if he will anybody ever felt like that like you know he can do it but you wonder why it hasn't happened to you 
Why hasn't it happened to me yet? Why happened for that guy? Well, we're going to cover that today because the answers are actually right here. And once you understand it, it's like, oh, that's what's happening. Maybe that's why I'm not walking in the fullness. Maybe that's why uh, I haven't seen things or experienced things in my life that God said I could have. The answers are right here. And honestly, they're in Romans. So what I'm going to do real quick, uh, we're going to pray and then I'm going to hit some of these scriptures because these scriptures, if you get them in you, they will actually set you free. And in John 8, where Jesus talks about, if you know the truth and continue in it, the truth will set you free. Well, what we're talking about here is the truth. And what we need to live in is the new covenant. So we're going to talk about the truth and then set you free. But set you free from what? It actually sets you free from the curse of the law, the old life, the old covenant. It actually sets you free from poverty, sickness, and death. It sets you free from living guilty and living condemned, which is where most Christians seem to be. All right, so let's pray. We're going to get into it. God, we love you and praise you. Thank you for this amazing group of men and women. They are here to learn more about you. They are here to grow. They are here to hit new levels. They are ambition, ambitious. They are driven. They are highly motivated. These are not Christians who are stagnant and stale. They want more of you. God, I thank you, Lord, that they are making themselves available to learn, grow, to be coachable, to be teachable, and you're leading them and guiding them by the Holy Spirit. They're not going to take my word for it. They're going to take your word for it. After this is over, they're going to dive into the word themselves and get this revelation for themselves. And I thank you that you are giving them that spirit of insight, wisdom, and revelation that you promised in Ephesians. God, we just love you and praise you. I think everybody here is blessed. I'm going to open my mouth, but it's going to be you that comes out. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, listen to, I got some key scriptures here. There will be, there will be notes available. Romans 3, 21 through 22. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. So quiz. Okay, right, right relationship and righteous. Here's, the, here's what that means. You guys need these definitions. It means you have a perfect relationship with God. Write that down. Righteous and righteousness equals a perfect relationship with God. Side note, I absolutely am thrilled to see you guys who are listening while you while you drive or while you work or while you got kids hanging out. I think this is awesome. You guys are heroes. Y'all are champions. Thank you, Fields. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's in the chat. A perfect relationship with God. All right. So listen, we are made right with God. In other words, we have a perfect relationship with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. All right, so if 20 minutes ago you got drunk and cussed and did horrible things 20 minutes ago, but you've made Jesus the Lord of your life and you place your faith in him, do you still have a perfect relationship with God, yes or no? You do. Now, I'm not saying there's not consequences to sin. But I'm saying your relationship with God is not damaged. The way he sees you, he's not mad at you or disappointed in you. It is nothing but love towards you. This is, this is, the, this is why Paul was considered crazy. Because Paul was a Jew. Paul was actually a Pharisee before all this. And the way to look at that is this. I, I, I kind of made this half joke on the other call last week where I was like, I kind of empathize with like the Pharisees. Like I kind of get it. They were doing their best living for God, what they knew, which was the old covenant. It was the old law, the one that Moses gave, the one with thousands of rules. And what it said was, if you keep those, those laws and those commands, then you can earn salvation. So where a lot of this stuff gets messed up is we don't teach what salvation actually is. We think in our minds, it's just when you die, you go to heaven. And that's not incorrect, but it's incomplete. 
That's only a part of it. It's why so many Christians live miserable lives down here and are, are broke and poor and busted and disgusted. And, but they have this hope of going to heaven. Okay. Again, not incorrect, just incomplete. There's so much more. So that word salvation, that word saved, we talked about it. I'm going to, I'm going to quit saying we talked about it last week. We did talk about it last week, but we're going to keep talking about it. Is that word, that Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O. And what it means, I have the exact definition here, but essentially what it means is like, you're, you're super saved. You are, here it is. It means to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, to save one from suffering, to save one from suffering from disease, to make well, to heal, restore to health, preserve one who's in danger of destruction, to save or rescue, to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment. And it is a package deal of the removal of both your sins and your sickness. So when you got saved, when you got born again, that's actually the privileges and benefits that came into your life. We've watered down salvation to just mean when you die, you go to heaven. You actually have access now to that sozo life. That's why Paul was considered crazy. He was like, they were like, wait, wait, you're telling me that it doesn't matter. Like, I, I wait, hold on. We've been keeping all these rules. We've been doing our best. We've been really trying to live for God. And you're telling me none of that matters now that Jesus rose again. There's a new way of living. And I get access to all that stuff now. They couldn't, they couldn't take it because they were like, wait. It doesn't matter how you perform. You still get access to it. So literally, and I'm not, I'm not, don't do this. This is not the message. But if you were sinning and doing some bad stuff last night, you still have access to the Sozo life. If you place your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. You have to believe that part. Now, there will be consequences to a lifestyle of sin. Your life will probably be cut short. There will be different, all kinds of penalties and things that you have to deal with, right? Like if you, I don't need to get into it. You guys get it. But your relationship with God is what I'm talking about. That part's not messed up. Just like if, if and your kids won't do this, but if your kids did things you did not like or approve of and knew were bad for them, you would still love them the same. You'd want to help them and coach them and guide them and correct them and discipline them. Yes, that's a loving father, a loving parent does. But your relationship with that person is still unconditional love. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to see, all right? And again, this is that word gospel. This is what Paul was doing. He was bringing the gospel. Actually, technically, he was reminding the churches, like Romans, Church of Rome. He was reminding them of what Jesus did. He was reminding them that it's actually a life of grace. You are in a perfect relationship with God now, even if you didn't keep every single law that Moses gave us. That's the thing. Again, you have to listen to the replay uh, to, to grasp all of that. I cannot recap the whole thing here. Let's keep reading. This will become more and more clear as to why this matters, even more so than you probably realize. Romans 4, verse 23 through 25. And he's talking about Abraham. And it says, God counted him as righteous in a perfect relationship with me. But it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him. There's the condition. If we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, he was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So when he was raised to life again, that's when the new covenant activated. So you have to remember, even when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was still old covenant. It was still the law that was in place. It was actually when he was raised again, the new covenant started. That's where we live now. And it's a great place to be. I'm enjoying it. Romans 6, 6. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. When Jesus died on the cross, our sinful nature was actually destroyed with him. This is a powerful part of our new covenant, okay? Under the old covenant, 
the the blood sacrifices, the old covenant, right? You messed up, you sinned, you had to go to God with like a lamb, spotless lamb, sacrifice it, and that blood would cover your sin you just did. I mean, we're going Bible study now, aren't we? Now that Jesus came, you ever heard Jesus been called the Lamb of God? Y'all heard that? That's why. Because he was the, the lamb sacrifice. And what makes it different is back then, every time you messed up, you had to go offer one of these animals as a sacrifice to repent, basically. Now, Jesus came and did that. He was the lamb of God, covers all of us. And what makes us different was that key scripture right there. It says, when Jesus died on the cross, our old sinful nature was destroyed with him. So what Jesus did covered our hearts, it covered our, our, that old nature, and all that's gone now. So instead of just covering one sin where we messed up, it covered the whole thing. So it covered our past sins, present sins, and future sins. It's all covered. This is why the gospel is so hard for people to understand. That word gospel, it means good news, but if you study it out, it actually means the too good to be true news. It's like crazy good because it includes what I just explained that your sins are taken care of. You're in a perfect relationship with God, no matter how you perform. And it takes care of past, present, and future stuff. And it includes that sozo life now and later. Man, is this clicking for anybody? Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Okay. Dr. Dave says, I like folks who are the right kind of crazy like Paul. Dude, Paul's crazy. I like that guy. Paul was a high performer. No matter what he was doing, that guy went hard. When he was a Pharisee, he went 100 miles an hour this way. When he got saved and became a Christian, he went 100 miles that way. Like he, he's awesome. And, and I think there's stuff, stuff to be learned from him for sure. Now, I want to read this scripture to you. This is Romans 8, 14 through 17 in the Passion Translation. Now, I've got kind of like three-ish scriptures that I think encapsulate this whole thing. And then I'm going to get to why this really, really, really matters. All right. Because it probably matters in a way you haven't thought about it. So Romans 8, 14. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Anybody ever felt that? You might, you might have felt that in, in a lot of different ways. You might have felt that uh, with your spouse or even as a parent or when you come to God. I just feel like I'm never good enough. Anybody felt that? All right. So what it's saying is that's the old covenant trying to creep back in it's the enemy he's bringing these things back in if there's a spirit of feeling like you're not good enough or the fear of never being good enough man squash that immediately it is not from god i know it can seem like it's from god but as we've just the few scriptures i've read you today prove it's not from god it continues but you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying these words of tender affection, beloved father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. As he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. All right, listen, that again sounds crazy. He's saying you are my sons and my daughters now. You've been adopted in. You will never feel orphaned. You'll never feel left alone and on your own. And he says that you are now heirs, meaning he's passed things on to you. That last line, 
And since we are joined to Christ, so you have to realize that you are joined to Christ. Even that line right there, those four or five words, since we are joined to Christ. Well, think about that for a minute. How many of you guys have ever struggled with something like, uh, man, I have an idea, but I don't know if it was God or just me. Man, I have an, I, I have an idea. There's something I want to do. Or I want to set goals, but I don't know if I'm trying to set the goals or if it's God setting the goals. What if it's the same thing? Why do we keep separating ourselves? Because it says you are joined to Christ. It says it multiple times in Ephesians. Ephesians 2 says it. Ephesians 6 says it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll turn over there in a minute. Philippians 2.13 says God is working in you both to make your desires and your will to line up with his. What if it's actually just the enemy saying that wasn't God, that was just you? Maybe, right? That's it. Actually, that actually is scriptural. That sounds more scriptural than the way we've been thinking. See, so many, so many of us aren't living in all of our new covenant benefits just because we don't actually know what this says. That's why at the beginning of this, I'm like, hey, don't take my word for it. Please go get the revelation for yourself. Let me kind of guide you where you can go look, but go get it for yourself. A lot of what you're doing right now is just unlearning what somebody taught you growing up. That's it. That's what Paul was doing when he was writing to all those churches. He was trying to unlearn them. I'm trying to get you to unlearn what you learned because what you learned was incorrect or incomplete. Uh, that was the passion translation, Jeff. The... The thing we have to remember is like, we have a lot of, well, I'll, I'll put it like this. I think it's um, Mark 5, let's see, this is Mark 5, 17. Okay, it's not Mark 5, 17, but it's that scripture. Maybe y'all know it. Uh, you can put it in there. Uh, it's that scripture that says, the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect in your life. The traditions of men will make the word of God of no effect in your life. So what that's talking about is we have these traditional ways of thinking that we haven't studied out for ourselves. I'll talk to a lot of people who have church hurt and they're they're out on church and, and all the stuff. And I'll I'll ask them a bunch of questions. And um, every single time it's the same reason. It it has to do with the pastor or somebody from that church taught them something or told them something that they didn't agree with, or that seemed harsh, or it might have been condemning. And that messed up their viewpoint because God was involved. I could go deeper on this. I could do a whole training on this. But what's actually happening is if, one, that person speaking probably didn't have the scripture for themselves. They were probably speaking the traditions of men that were passed on to him. Here's what you got to do to live right. Here's how you got to do things. Here's what God likes, right? But if the person speaking and the person receiving just got in here for themselves, they'd have no issues. We put all this baggage in a lot of condemnation, a lot of condemnation. Um, yeah, there's comments over here that talks about that. And man, I, I, I get it, but it's simply because of an unscriptural foundation. If you read Romans, just read Romans one through five and study it and go slow and get it and talk to God about it. Condemnation melts off of you. You guys all know Romans eight. And I'm going to read it here in the New Living. And it just says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Zero. So if you're feeling condemned, Is that God? 
problem is we give God the credit for that. This is why Christians can get messed up is without scriptural knowledge, what we do is we keep giving God credit for stuff that Satan's doing. If we think God is doing it, we allow it. We accept it because we're not going to fight against God. We love him. So when you have that feeling of not being good enough, never being good enough, that's condemnation. Let me read a, a, a definition of condemn here. So you can recognize these thoughts and feelings and shut them down because they're not from God. Condemn means to give judgment against, to judge worthy of punishment. It means to pronounce you unfit for service. You ever felt that? Man, how could I pray for anybody? I can't even get my own stuff right. How could I give anybody advice when I'm not even doing it? How could I, right? You're pronouncing yourself unfit for service. That's condemnation. To judge to be guilty, to be wrong, to be disapproved of. The act of declaring one guilty and dooming him to punishment. So what that means is, man, you ever go through, you go through a financial situation and you feel like you deserve it. Because it's like, man, I, I overspent. I wasn't a good steward. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting what's coming to me. That's condemnation. That's not God, but we think it is. God's not trying to teach you something through this. He can teach you something through it, but that's not the reason you went through it. We keep giving God the credit for bad things that happen. And here's why that's super dangerous. Jesus taught us in John 10, 10. What does the enemy do? What does the thief do? He comes to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. But there are times in our life when stuff is stolen, killed, and destroyed, and we think it's God. Pretty clear line. In Colossians 1, it says we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light now. But th there'll be things that happen in the darkness, and we'll be like, oh, that's God. It's not. But if you think it is, and you give him credit, you'll just let it happen to you. James 4, 7. It says, submit to God. Resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. It doesn't say God, it doesn't say to pray to God and say, God, remove this devil from my life, but he does tell you how to handle it. He says, submit to God. And when I read that, I see the words, it's not technically written. So you can take this as you will, but I see the word only. Submit to God only. So I don't submit to what the world is saying about the economy. If you have a business right now or a job right now or a sales position, and you are talking about why your sales are down because the economy is bad, or whoever's in president, whoever's the president, or this virus that's going around and everybody's getting sick right now. Could be a it could be a cold, could be a cough, could be whatever. I don't submit to those things. I submit to God only. Then I resist the devil. You start getting a symptom in your body, you tell you say no. Don't you know who I am? I'm united with Christ now. We're one. Get out. Because I'm in a perfect relationship with God. When you feel like you deserve punishment, you're in condemnation. You're putting yourself back under the old covenant, which the Bible actually says you can do. Jesus fulfilled the law, but the law's still in place. If you choose to go back under the law, here's the problem. 
you have to keep all the law. And there's like 3,000 something commandments you have to keep. And some of them are really weird and really hard. In fact, so hard, nobody ever did it except Jesus. He was the only one who pulled it off. And it's why God actually sent him. He sent him to go pull it off, to perform perfectly, then be sacrificed like a lamb for you, for us, for me. Because I can I couldn't live under law, I can pull it off. Jesus did. He performed perfectly. And then now that he's been sacrificed, we get what he deserved. That's the key to the whole thing between the old covenant and the new covenant, and this gift of grace, this grace gift of righteousness. That's the best part. You're in a perfect relationship with God by his free gift. We might hit the scriptures, but when you read Romans, it'll say over and over and over again, this free gift of righteousness, this free gift of a perfect relationship. It's just given to you when you believe and have faith in Jesus. That's it. All right. It's not your performance that messes with the relationship. Let's go to uh, Romans 5.1 in the Passion Translation. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. Let's look at that. Here's how I study the Bible. All right, most people read the Bible like this. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. He now declares flaws in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true, lasting peace with God, all because of it. It's like we're just trying to like get through it or something, all right? It's like uh, sometimes you, you eat lunch and you're just trying to get through it. But then there's other times you eat a meal, you go real slow, and you enjoy every bite, and you savor it, and you take your time. That's how we should look at God's word. Because like I just said, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. All right, that's actually half of the sentence. I just read you half of the sentence, but most of y'all don't have that revelation of what I just said, because I'm just now really getting it myself. Our faith in Jesus, our trust in Jesus, our belief in Jesus transfers God's perfect relationship to us. That's it. So what you have to do now, the way I do this is I, I'd stop right there and I would think to myself, do I understand what that means? Because I'll be honest with you, I wasn't feeling righteous the other day when XYZ happened or when I did this or when I did that. I wasn't feeling like I had a perfect relationship with God. In fact, I was just praying to him and I was just telling him how crappy I've been. Hold on, man. We didn't even understand half a sentence. Stop and read this thing. There's so much in it. Let's finish the sentence now. He now declares us flawless in his eyes. So right now, he declares you flawless. When he looks at your spirit, when he looks at you, it's perfect. You are thinking of all these bad things that you've done and how you haven't performed perfectly. The enemy wants you living condemned. When you live condemned, you actually run from God. Conviction will draw you closer to him. Condemnation will pull you away. It'll separate you. This means, I'm going to keep reading, we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God. So you can enjoy it. So if you feel like you haven't been performing as a perfect Christian, you know you can read the Bible more, you know you could have got up earlier and studied more, you know you could have prayed more, you know you, know you could do this stuff more. Um, I remember when I was like 16, 17, getting a cold. And I remember thinking, oh man, it's because I didn't appreciate my, when I was feeling well, I didn't say thanks to God enough. Like I didn't show God that I was thankful enough when I was feeling better. So now that I got this on, on me, it's like, oh man, I, I really should have been more thankful for my health when I was feeling good. That's a really weird thought, but it's also unscriptural. It's also not accurate. It's also condemnation. But it also kind of sounds like, oh yeah, I, I could kind of see that. We do it with, with money. Like I said earlier, an example of 
we do it where um, you know you're in a tight money situation, maybe your bank account went negative, and you're like, yeah, man, I'm never gonna figure this thing out. That's what I get. Like I knew I I knew I was sloppy. I knew I didn't pay attention to the numbers enough. The problem with that, there's a lot of problems with that. One of the main ones is you feel like you deserve it. You're guilty of it. You get it. You've doomed, been doomed to this punishment. So the problem is now you don't even go to God to help, help you in your time of trouble. It's like, how could God help me? I've been a horrible steward with his money. Look at my bank account. So now you don't do anything to fix it. Remember James 4? Submit to God. Well, right there, you're submitting to condemnation. And you're not resisting the devil. You're accepting it. You're just letting poverty happen. You're just letting sickness happen, happen to you. You're not walking in your authority because you're now declared flawless in his sight. Oh, man. Okay. Our faith guarantees permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. That's back to Romans 5. That was verse 2 in the Passion. Our faith guarantees permanent access. That's what I'm talking about. You are permanently in a right relationship with him. It actually says that, that perfect thing down here. Our faith guarantees permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. And if you, if you just got those two, Romans 5.1 and 5.2, read it in the Passion Translation. Man, if you just got that in you, that alone changes everything. And I'm getting to my point here, my main point, all right? Um, real quick, while I switch over here to an, another scripture, can you guys put in the chat some of your takeaways so far? What if some of these aha moments, I'm seeing some of them in there already. Kimberly talks about what did I do wrong? Yes, that is a great example. That's exactly what most people and myself have felt over and over and over again. Why isn't it working? Yeah, I cannot, I literally could not tell you how many times I've had that thought, said that out loud, meditate on it. Why, why isn't it working for me? Why is it working for other people, but it's not working for me? What am I doing wrong? Those sound like good questions, but I'd venture to say they're rooted in condemnation. If you truly believe that you were made flawless in God's sight, your questions would change. The way you pray would change. Man, this is good. Sharon says the devil works overtime and we buy it. Yeah, we give into it. We accept it. And oftentimes we give God the credit for it. Dr. Day says no condemnation. I've read it. I know it. I just don't live it. Yeah. The reason I'm so passionate about sharing this stuff is like, it's been giving me revelation. It's, this is dorky, but uh, it's corny. But it's the revelation is giving us a revolution is really what's happening. If I can transfer this revelation to you guys, if I can help you get it, like, like understand it, know it, have revelation of it. Because when you have true revelation, like Dr. Dave was saying, that's when you start to live it. I think everything I've said, y'all have mentally agreed with, but I'm always challenging you to check yourself. Am I living it though? Because if you actually believe it, there will always be action that goes with your belief. Faith is action. Believing is action. It shouldn't be separated. These are great points. Field says, yeah, it doesn't say to pray to God and ask him to remove the devil from your life. You are told what to do. Resist and take authority. He's given us that power. He's delegated that power and authority to us. Lucille says, I've read this so many times, but today it's like they're alive. Yeah. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, it says the word of God is alive and powerful. I've always thought it was performance. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't I get it right? Yeah. Oh man, that's a, that's a, you guys are so good at this. Exactly. See, this is so good. The the definition of 
self-righteousness. Can you all handle it? It's when you look at what you've done or accomplished, expecting it to give you a better result from God. You rely on your own actions rather than on faith in God's divine grace. We'll have notes so you don't have to write all this down, but it says, but look at what I've done for you, God, instead of focusing on what God has already done for us. He's already made you in perfect relationship with him. But we are saying, God, how come, and this is the example I, I've used in the past many times, like, God, how come that guy is making more money than me, having more success than me? He barely even goes to church. I've done that. I tithe. I give. I read my Bible all the time. Charcelle's crack, cracking up because she knows. Yeah, I think we all know. Well, that's because that guy over there is operating by grace. He's receiving what God, he's not taking into consideration his performance, but we are. He, that other person is actually operating in true faith. He's straight up operating on what this said. We're over here making, we're praying, and then we're like, ah, that actually probably could have done more. Uh, oh, I don't actually think it's going to happen because, you know, I haven't been very obedient lately to God. He's told me some stuff to do, and I still haven't done it. It's not how we're supposed to live. All right, I'm going to get to my main point. Let's go to 1 John 3, 20. Again, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation kind of surprised me. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's got, especially when you buy the physical Bible, it actually has very, very in-depth study notes and footnotes built in. And it's it's very scriptural. Like, it's like he studied all the ancient texts and all the old stuff so in depth so that he could hand select the words to put up here. It wasn't like he, he didn't write the passion translation to just kind of be like, let me think of prettier words to put up here. It was actually like very, very, very studied and thought through and strategic. So a lot of what you'll read in here was more correct translations from the, the old Aramaic and stuff like that. So I think it's worth getting, especially like if you get a physical Bible, so it has all those extra notes in there. I think it's worth looking into. So 1 John 3.20, here's why this all matters. It says, whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures. What is that? Condemnation. Whenever that happens, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our own conscience. So saying our own conscience is not being merciful to us right now. Our own conscience, our heart, is trying to make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, but God doesn't do that. It goes on to say, God knows everything there is to know about us. My delightfully loved friends, when our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God. And whatever we ask, whatever we ask of him, we receive. All right, listen. Here's what that's saying. This is why this matters. When you feel condemned, you don't go to God. You actually show up less because you don't like that feeling. Have you ever heard, none of you guys have done this, right? But have you ever heard of somebody talking to someone and they're like, man, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to step out of church for a little bit. I just got to get some things right in my life before I come back. But ever heard somebody say that you would not, not you guys, but you've heard somebody say that, right? Well, they think they're doing a godly act, but it's a complete deception of Satan. What's happening is they're feeling condemned worthy of punishment, unfit for service. Remember the definitions of condemned? And so they don't go to God. They run from him. They're feeling those feelings of guilt. Do you remember after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit? 
What did they do? They looked down and realized they were naked. They were embarrassed. They were ashamed. They felt guilty. It's the same patterns. So God said, Adam, where are you? Why? Because Adam was hiding. He was not going to God like he normally does. They normally walk together in the cool of the day and have a good time and talk it out. But he felt guilty, so he ran. He was feeling condemned, so he ran. That's what we do. I have people pull out of groups like this because they're feeling condemned. Uh, we do a, a, a local uh, men's group every Friday. I've had people pull out of that because they're feeling condemned. I've had people, and they'll, they'll mask it. They'll say it's other things because a lot of times it's really hard to face, hard to own up to, right? So you say it's this reason. You say you're getting busy. You say it's this, say whatever. No, no, no. Your heart, your heart is condemning you. You've allowed those things in. Don't do that. That's not from God. Reminding of your failures, that spirit of never being good enough. No, that isn't God. Because you're in perfect relationship with him. You're made flawless in his sight. You're an heir with Jesus. Means It's like you're his half-brother. You guys are joint heirs. You guys are united in Christ together now. This changes everything. Now, and it's revealed in 1 John, why? Now, you go to God boldly. You go meet with him face to face, and you, whatever you ask of him, you will receive. It goes on to say this. And by our beautiful intentions, or excuse me, it says, whatever we ask of him, we receive because we keep his commands. Now, listen, when I first read that, I was like, wait, because we keep his commands, that sounds like old covenant. But a very smart thing to do sometimes is just to keep reading because it tells you exactly what it means. Keep his commands. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to him. And these are his commands. So Old Covenant, we had 3,176 commands. I don't know the exact number, but now we just have two. So these are his commands, that we continually place our trust in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we keep loving one another, just as he commanded us. For all who obey those commands find their lives joined in union with him. And he lives and flourishes in them. We know and have proof that he constantly lives and flourishes in us by the spirit he has given us. Wow. Okay, listen. Go, go, go out on the limb here with me for a minute, okay? And did y'all do this? Pretend for a second that it's going to sound funny. Just, do, just bear with me. Pretend for a second you actually are Jesus. You actually, you literally did never sin. You, you never messed up. You actually did follow and perform perfectly. Okay, can you get there? Can you like actually imagine it? All right, I've, I've literally never messed up. I'm God's literal son. I'm perfect. I perform perfectly. I've never sinned. Now, what do you, now show up to God. What would you ask for? What would you pray for? Because now I know for sure, do you guys know that Jesus, every time he went to God, he got whatever he asked for? Every time, right? God could never say, well, Jesus, you're not quite ready for that yet because of how you performed yesterday. Because of what you did, what you said, and what you thought. God didn't say that to Jesus. So now, now that you are declared flawless in his sight, just like Jesus was, you can come to God boldly, and whatever you ask of him, you know you'll receive it. Think about that right now in your marriage, in your family, in your money, in your kids, in your calling. You can go to God boldly because you're not guilty or condemned anymore. You have a clear conscience now. This all matters because 
we're living very limited, powerless lives because we carry this guilt all the time. We carry the spirit of never being good enough all the time. So now you show up to your father, the almighty, the creator, who says you can have anything you ask. It says it like eight or nine times in the New Testament. You can have whatever you ask. She said, I'll do it. It makes God look good. It brings him glory. The only prerequisite is that we believe that. The thing is, we don't believe it. Mark 11, 23, Jesus says, if you have the faith of God, you can say to a mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, it will be done for you. I So listen, he's actually saying, if you could have the belief that that would happen, it would. Like an actual mountain. Problem is, you don't have the faith for that. Like you can't believe, you probably cannot believe that. And listen to the power that he made available to us with the pre prerequisite, the condition that we just have to believe it and have no doubt in our hearts. So if you believe you're made flawless in this sight and have no doubt in your heart, and the scriptures are what's supposed to help you have no doubt in your heart. So I can, that's why I'm trying to get everybody to, to read this. And study. I'm, can I guys give you my underlying like agenda here? Travis has an agenda with this. I'm trying to make reading the Bible cool again. For real. I've got physical Bibles. I got all kinds of, look how thick this Bible is. Yo, y'all want a thick Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that gives you understanding. Most of us don't have understanding. We might have knowledge. Knowledge is going to be information. You got information. You got it. You've heard it. You've read it. Right? I've already had those chats come in. I've heard this my whole life. It never clicked. Knowledge or info moves to the next phase of wisdom. Wisdom is where you start to apply it. But there's also times where, man, I've applied it, I've done it, but I don't fully understand it. The next step is understanding slash revelation. And that's where you get it and live it. An example, you might read a scripture like Philippians 4.19 that says, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Okay, I get it. But then you don't go to God when you're in a financial need. You run straight to somebody else. You do, so, you do something else. You go sell something. You go try to make something happen in your own strength. Okay, you have knowledge, but you don't have wisdom. Wisdom is like, okay, I know what the Bible says about finances. I have a financial need. Let me go open the scripture. I'm going to read it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to speak it. And I'm going to get in there. All right, God, I, I'm just thanking you right now that what you said will happen. You will some way, somehow, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to trust you, and you're going to meet my needs. Okay, now you got some wisdom. You start to apply the things, right? You're starting to, starting to make some adjustments, starting to put it into action. But I think there's another level of understanding and revelation where a financial need comes, and you just say, oh, God's got that. And you forget about it, and you just keep rolling on. Because now you're living it. Now you understand it. And there's nothing wrong with being in any of those phases that I just described because I think it is a progression like that. But let's start putting in the work to move up that ladder and to make that progression. And the more you read this, man, the more your doubt, the more your unbelief is removed. And when your doubt and unbelief is removed, you've got God's power flowing through you that you can literally talk to a mountain and tell it what to do. The prerequisites, again, the conditions are you have to believe and have no doubt in your heart. I'll be honest with you. If I speak to a mountain right now to tell it to move, I'm going to have some doubt in my heart. So it's not going to happen. But if I keep reading and I keep reading this stuff and I can truly see myself as flawless in his sight despite my performance, I can go to God and have whatever I ask of him. And I'll keep his commands. I'll keep my faith in Jesus and I'll keep loving other people. You can do those two. You couldn't do the 3,000 ones from the old law, the old commands, but you can do the, those two. You can keep your faith in Jesus and keep loving people. Great, you qualify. Now your heart doesn't have to condemn you. Now you don't have to feel guilty. Now you can go boldly before God. You don't have to run and hide from him because you're embarrassed. You actually go to him. So just think about that. If you're feeling that 
I'm not good enough. It's going to hinder your prayer life. I'm trying to get you to operate in these new covenant benefits, this power that God's giving you, because you guys have stuff to do for God. You got to start moving. I turned 40 on Monday, and I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying it. There is a, I want to say a little bit of an urgency, not in a way of like, oh man, I'm running out of time, but in a way of like, I actually, honestly, I feel like I'm just getting started. Like 40 is like, we're just getting, we're just getting things ramped up. You know what I'm saying? The way we need to look at that and look at time is we're like a, a snowball or a fireball and things are burning brighter and hotter and faster and bigger and it just keeps growing. It doesn't actually ex extinguish or go out. It's a fireball that keeps getting hotter and hotter with more momentum, momentum, momentum. And I want you guys to look at your life that way too. See, I want to get you guys past what we just talked about today. Honestly, like real talk, transparent, y'all cool with that? Big boy, big girl talk. It's like, I want to get you guys past this condemnation guilt thing because it's actually what's holding up everything for you. It's the basics. It, the commentary I was reading on Romans when I was studying all this is like, it's actually like the ABCs of being a Christian. Yet, it hangs people up their entire lives. And there's no condemnation for that, but I want to make you aware of it so we can get past it. So a lot of you guys aren't fulfilling the call on your life right now because you're still dealing with this. You don't go to God boldly. You go to God ashamedly and timidly and fearfully and knowing you don't deserve to get what you ask him. So you know you're not going to get it. Or you don't even go to him at all. I had a friend who dealt with this condemnation feeling. So instead of him running to God to fix it, he actually stopped doing his prayer time in the morning. He actually read less Bible. He actually prayed less. Well, from 30,000 foot view, we can see the problem with that. A lot of problems with that because you're never going to fix it and you're going to get drifting. My pastor talks about, uh, and I, so I, I started looking for this a couple years ago and it just played out. And one of the things he said is he'll notice uh, at church when somebody begins to drift. He's like, they'll typically be sitting in the first one, two, three rows. And then after a while, I'll look and they're kind of sitting about midway back. And he's like, the next thing you know, they're kind of sitting in the back row. And the next thing you know, they're not there anymore. And I think that's a pretty simple and practical illustration and progression of what a lot of us do. So we're sitting there, we're doing that in different ways, in different faculties. You might do it at your church, but uh, you do it in like groups like this and programs like this. You'll do it in different it's it everywhere. It's it's a perfect example of that con condemnation feeling being played out in real life. When we need to be going closer to God, we actually pull away. That's the enemy. That's his plan. That's his strategy. And we'll say things like, let me get some stuff right first. Then I'll go back in church. Then I'll get plugged back in. But that can't be true because church is how you get your life right. Getting closer to God is how you fix the thing. It's not getting farther away. Right? It's like, hey, let me get my let me get my arm fixed first, then I'll go to the hospital. What that's where you get your arm fixed. Like, what are we talking about? But we, I'm telling you, I'm just trying to get you guys check this stuff. I mean, check it in your life. Paul says, examine yourself daily to make sure you're in faith. Not fear, not condemnation. You got stuff to do. Let's get past this thing. All right. I picture like a little, little box, a little package. Okay, cool. Let's get past the let's get past this so we can move on to the stuff that really matters while we're down here. Because like I said, we're like, we're like a fireball, right? We're getting after it. We're burning hotter and brighter and going faster. Let's keep moving. Let's keep rolling. It doesn't matter your age. Let's just keep going. I'm excited. That's what I have. Thank you guys for the birthday wishes. Um, I've got a few more minutes. If you guys, anybody has to hop off, go for it. But um, if you guys want any questions or comments or takeaways, 
that you want to put on the on the slide. That would be awesome for me. Any, anything you learned, um, new stuff you're going to implement, how things are going to change. Just give me something in the comments there. And uh, Rob, if you've got anything to add or field or lease, feel free to hop in. Yeah, just want to uh, invite anybody that does have questions. There's no dumb question, guys. Uh, and so don't don't allow uh, fear to hold you back from asking a question uh, when it can give you the answers that you need. And to be honest with you, it's probably a question that other people have as well. So they just may be afraid to answer. And so unmute yourself and uh, ask your question uh, and, yeah, get the answers that you need. So. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Um, yeah, if you maybe do the hand raise thing or something, we can find you or or put it in the chat if you've got a question. Good Enjoy afternoon. The... Can you hear me? Hey, what's up, Eric? Hey, I have a question. I'm trying to find out what is my calling. Yeah. I, I literally been praying about it and everything. I've been reading the Bible, but I, I still don't know what God has for me to do. Yeah. If you had to, like, don't overthink. If you had to guess, so what would you say it is? Like, just a guess. I have a desire to, to teach God's word. I, I mean, I really don't know. I think we just found it. That was pretty simple. Who's next? Any other <laughs> questions? You see what I'm saying? No, Eric, I was just joking. Well, I wasn't joking. I was serious. But that right there, like, what the that pattern you just displayed is like what? And I'm so glad you asked that because... Please, everybody listening, just pretend I asked that to you. And if you had to guess, what would you think it is? And you'll have an answer. I have a desire to teach God's word. Eric, you're in the right spot because that's my desire as well. And so if we look at, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but let's go to Philippians 2.13. It says, God will continually revitalize you implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. So you've got a passion, a desire to teach God's word. Sounds like he implanted that in you, like he just said he would do in Philippians 2.13. Let me read it in another translation. For God is working in you, Eric, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So if you have that desire, who's to say that wasn't from him? It's definitely not from Satan. I promise you that. And even if it was, quote unquote, just you, well, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's teach God's word. You know what I'm saying? Now, you might be saying, like, I don't know the strategy on how to execute that. Okay. That's a different question, though. What I want you to do is to lock in on that desire. Me and Rob were talking about how those things that kind of have been tugging at you for a long time. And it's not super loud, but it's kind of like a tug. It's like a tug in a direction. And that's, I would assume that's a very accurate description of what you've been feeling, is a tug in that direction to teach God's word. Hmm. Yes, Maybe. it is. Maybe, yeah. Well, why would we stop and, and question question that? You might be questioning, am I good enough? Uh, have I performed well enough? Because if I'm going to teach God's word, I got to be perfect, right? It goes back yeah. to that. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. and it, but that manifests itself in confusion. So because we're we're listening to the enemy, don't feel like it, doesn't, we don't realize it, but we're listening to the enemy. So it manifests itself in confusion. I don't know what I'm called to do. You know what you're called to do. But you're questioning if you can do it or if you're good enough to do it or if you performed well enough to do it or that kind of thing. And so as you begin to lean in, and I mean, what if, call me crazy, Eric, but what if you went to God and just said, God, I want to teach your word. That's what I want to do. What do you think he would say? I think it would be okay. I think he would, he would definitely um, 
and equip me to do so. I believe it. Okay. Then don't listen to any of that contrary thought ever again. Shut it down. Amen. Awesome. Eric, are you in are you in Increase Academy or Increase Warrior or anything? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Man, keep hanging out with us on in, in Warrior for sure. And uh we'll we'll keep working on this, okay? All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. You've been a blessing to me. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm glad you're here. Eric, thanks for being the brave one, man, and going first today. Yeah. It always <laughs> takes guts, man, but you you're a stud. Thank Who you. else is the brave one? I think we got another one in the chat, Travis. And then Joy, Joy raised her hand too. So Joy's one of our warriors. So we we definitely want to Joy make sure you get taken care of. Um, yeah. So you want to read Williams? Yeah. I mean, this is like anything. Um, starting my own business in light of online security concerns. I don't want to live in fear, but I want to use sound judgment. Yeah. So here's the deal is like there's always like those types of things are you're gonna have those types of concerns like every step of the way so just at some point it's like you just got to go for it yeah you put your name out there you're gonna put your stuff out there um you can really i've used all the not all of them but i've used a ton of payment processors all that kind of thing i think the question is more is like it doesn't really matter the tactics here it's just you're gonna have to get past some of those fear thoughts because they're going to stop you every step of the way. So you're going to fix this one, and then there'll be another one. And you're going to, then there's going to be another one. There's going to be another one. I personally, um, you know, honestly, like online security risks, and there are always people trying to implement fear into helping your decisions, and they usually just stop you. So at some point, you got to make that decision that I'm just going to go forward and trust God that he'll take care of me in these decisions. And it'll work out. It'll be great. And you'll have... There'll be problems and stuff that come up, but God just gives you the strategy for those too. Uh, Kimberly asked, what's the difference between increased army and increased warrior? So warriors are coaching program and we, we have an app and some uh, really cool trainings that come in there. And then we meet uh, once a week, you get a coach. Uh, I'm on there with you too, but you also get a one-on-one -on -one call with one of our coaches to help you with strategy. And then we just, we meet every week to make sure you're taking steps towards your goals. So we've got financial training. So we'll make sure your finances are lined up. We've got training on fulfillment and fulfilling the call in your life. We make sure those are lined up and dialed in in your life. You can ask questions with us. It's just a lot of access to me and the coaching team and uh, on a weekly basis. So you get to hang out with us a lot, get more interactions like this, and uh, we give you custom fit help to your situation. And then uh, the Increase Army, or we call it Increase Academy, is it's a lot of the trainings, but it doesn't have the coaching or accountability or community element. Trav, I don't know if you saw Joy's comment in there. Joy, you want to unmute yourself? If you're still on. Hi, good morning. Hey, Joy's real quick. Joy's an increased warrior, and Joy's one of my heroes. She uh, <laughs> she recently quit her day job to pursue what she loves and what God has put on her heart. She's She's baking pies and pastries and making quilts and mugs and all kinds of cool stuff. She's just getting after the thing that's been on her heart and she's taking action. That's a big deal about Joy is like she's taking, so we know a lot of her story, right? So part of Increase Warrior, when you come on is you'd be like, hey, here's exactly what I'm dealing with. I've got this business issue or this money thing or you know, any, doesn't have to be those categories, but Joy's talking about her business adventures that she's been doing with her pie company. Yeah. So I took, I went to see the cheesecake lady yesterday and I walked in and um, she was in the back. So they called her up. I'm like, I'm just checking how you liked my pie and everything. And she loved it. She was going, cause I've just been so busy. And um, she gave me some good advice. She gave me some samples of her strawberries, chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> no, we had an awesome time and she took I got a new app to how to take pictures and how to filter and to get on Facebook Marketplace. She gave me so much good advice and um, she definitely is going to put my name out there uh, with people that need pies. I'm updating my business card and putting my phone number on there, which is a ter terrifying thing that people are going to have my cell phone number. But she said that's really the next step. You're going to realize that people love personal contact and not just 
So I am so glad I got out, out of my head, out of my insecurities. You challenged me. I just did it. And um, so she is such an inspiration. And um, we just have a camaraderie now. We're like good friends, you know. It's not awesome. competitive at all, you know. It's just, and she was so gracious. And yeah, thank you for pushing me um, because I was just going to sit back and wonder and like, why, did, why didn't she like me? <laughs> like you said, and um, she just loved it. And so thank you. I Great had job. to share. Great job. <laughs> You're a rock star. Oh. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I think, Joy, that's a great example of how we get our breakthrough. You know, we said it at the beginning of this call, getting knowledge doesn't do anything for us. It's only when we apply what we've heard that we experience our breakthrough, that we get results. And you were on the accelerator call this week on Tuesday. Travis gave you that insight, that advice. Others in the community, I think Sharon was one of them encouraging you. She may have just gotten busy. Go ask her. Go talk to her. And you did that. And as a result, you experienced a breakthrough. If you didn't take action on that, you would still be wondering, you know, without that connection and, and just wondering what to do next, floundering. And so great job with executing on the instructions that you were given. And for the rest of us on this call, there was something that Travis said that resonated with us. There was something, there was an example that he gave. There was a scripture that he read. Maybe it was a question that someone else asked, but it resonated with us with us so strongly that we know what we should do next. We know what our next step should be. I want to encourage you, just like Joy got her breakthrough from taking action, you can do the exact same thing. You can take what you heard. You can do something with it and you can experience breakthrough. We don't have to have all of the answers, have everything figured out before we take the first step. All we have to do is be obedient and watch God open up doors, watch him give us breakthrough, watch provision come. Just so many things happen when we begin to move our feet and take that step. And so for some of you, your next step could be, you know what, I need to be in warrior. Maybe I'm in academy right now and I'm getting a lot out of it, but I need that accountability like Joy has, like others here, to take the next step on the action items that I know I'm supposed to do. You can accomplish a good amount on your own, but we can accomplish so much more when we go together with others. We can go further and faster. I've even heard of statistics that, that said something, you know, you can... You can accomplish like 90% more if you surround yourself with community. People that set New Year's resolutions, the 17th of this month was quitting day. Most people have already quit on their New Year's resolutions last week. <laughs> but those of us that are surrounding our goals and our objectives with community, man, we're still moving forward. We may get sidetracked here and there, but because we have accountability around us, we refocus and we keep advancing. So whatever your next step is, let's go. It's go time. Let's implement. Let's get our breakthrough. Yeah. And when you guys, I want you guys, I put a link in the in the chat. If you're interested, there's no pressure. If you're interested in hanging out with us more, check it out. Come hang out with us. Try it out. Um, the thing that has impacted my life, like I've really dissected this over the last several years, is simply the more. I mean, quantity matters to me. The more touches I have with things that keep my faith built high, the more I win and the more I'm not affected by the world or by the enemy, right? So, I mean, I'm talking literally like the more times I go to church, the more times I uh, do small group and our men's group and calls like this and hang out with godly people, literally the more times I do it, the more my faith rises and stays built up so you get a bad report you get a negative thing um pipe bursts on your house air conditioner goes out car gets a flat and it's like yeah yeah bummer but my faith is built so high that those things aren't really affecting me i got my armor on i put the, the whole armor i got on this morning before any of that stuff happened uh i got my call today with my coaching group 
So we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to learn some stuff and then I'm going to get some custom fit coaching if I need it. Here's what I'm working on. Here's what I struggle with. It's like, man, just living that way is, I'm telling you guys, it, it's, it's how you go further faster. It's how you get off that plateau. It's how you get unstuck. It's how you get that breakthrough. So I want to make it available. Um, it, you know, I'm always going to be teaching this stuff and everything that we do is heavy on God's word. Did you guys enjoy like the Bible study? I want to do more Bible studies, to be honest with you. You guys like that? Everybody like that? Good. Because like the more I understand this, and this is hard for our flesh, hard in our natural minds, our reasoning. It's like the more I like understand it, right? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. The more understanding I get, the more everything else, like a uh, fun little praise report. I lost six pounds over the last two weeks, which is, which I'm excited about. And, uh, and I'm going to keep going for a little bit more. I'm almost right where I want to be. Uh, but as funny as it sounds, I think my understanding of Romans has helped me lose weight because it kind of changes everything when you have that revelation of your relationship with God. It does. It revolutionizes things. I have a deeper understanding now. I thought I knew, but now I have a deeper one and I get it on another level. Well, that's going to translate to any goal or result you have. It's going to translate to a better marriage. It's going to translate to your kids crushing it. It's going to translate to your finances. It's going to translate to your business. It's going to translate to paying off debt. It's going to translate to your health. It's going to translate to all of these things because that is that sozo life. Remember, salvation isn't just when you die and go to heaven. It's living heaven on earth. It's living healed, healthy, prosperous, and all the other things that you'll have in heaven. It's living it now. Again, that's why it's the too good to be true news. So if you understand that revel that that relationship you have with God is now flawless and perfect. Well, now I'm going to change my prayers change a little bit, doesn't it? My expectation changes. I fully believe I'm going to get whatever I ask of them because first John 3 20 says it's true. Oh man. Anyway, I'm ranting. Get fired up. Get fired, fired up. up. How I live. It's, it's not, it's not like up and down. I'm going to just live like this. <laughs> awesome guys. Hey, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Hope to see you guys either on Warrior or next next Thursday. Next Thursday, you can run it back with us and yeah. uh, hop on. Travel will be sending out another link via email. So you guys are awesome, everybody. Have an amazing day, and uh, we'll see you soon. See you guys.